So I'm Brecht van Kouwenberg, I'm working at Ultron, uh, and I will present you today uh, an implementation of our mesh protocol inside uh, yeah, with our uh, PKTCP custom stack. So first of all, what will I talk about uh, are three basic things. What are the possibilities with mesh networking? What is mesh networking? Um, and what is our PKTCP stack? Uh, and how does it work in general altogether. Um, so mesh, natu mesh networking is actually uh, a collection of different nodes which uh, set up the, the routing information or the routing infrastructure uh, to be able to communicate with each other in a dynamic way. So it will describe in a specific routing technique uh, how they can communicate with each other. Uh, where can it be used for? It could be used for uh, sensor networks like uh, yeah, geospatial information, different uh, nodes that are spread over a geographical environment, or home automation, or actually have a network uh, which is mobile, so also known as a uh, mobile uh, network. Um, which is configuring itself and dynamically adapting towards uh, how the network is uh, changing. So how does it work? Um, there are basically two different ways you can uh, implement a mesh network, uh, and that's one on-demand or uh, secondly, uh, table-driven. And the on-demand, uh, an, an, an example of that could be AODV, which is a protocol that is describing that, and it's really um, asking uh, the, the routing information the moment it needs to send some data towards uh, another route. Uh, in contrary, the table-driven one will construct the, the routing information uh, on the go and sequentially without having actually needing the data itself. So, um, one of the, the table-driven ones is OLSR, which is a optimized link state routing protocol as described in RFC. And it will actually build the, the tables proactively before uh, they will need to send data. So for example, this could be a routing table that is required for, uh, to get from one side to another. So if I would get, want to get to destination three, then I want to hop to uh, gateway two, and it's going to be one hop, so the metric is going to be one, and and like that, it will build up all different, uh, um, yeah, routing information. Um, now, how does it functionally work? They will send, each node has the same intelligence inside, and they will send hello messages to all their neighbor nodes. All these neighbor nodes will con connect to the other ones and actually um, select their one of their neighbors as uh, a multipoint relay, which is actually sending their topology information uh, with TC messages to the rest of the, the, uh, the network. Then there are two different uh, more uh, advanced um, message types, the mid messages, which will um, send more uh, interface data towards the network, and the HNI to inject uh, um, new routing information into a, an from another network into this network. Uh, in contrary, the on-demand um, routing will be pre uh, reactive. B will be reactive, and actually uh, build the routes by a route request on the moment they, they require it. So what is the, the advantage of the one in contrary to the other one? Um, if you have all the routes available, it will go faster to send the data um, and you don't need to have the overhead of building up the tables. So, um, and the, the reactive protocol will react more on different changes in the routing information. Okay, so how did we implement it? Um, we made a PQTCP stack, 
which is basically a networking stack uh, built for a, um, to be a modular way uh, to connect to other different devices without requiring a lot of um, yeah, operating system dependencies. So you can just run it bare metal and modularly select whether or not you want to have certain features available. So this is an example of how you could compile such a, uh, an embedded stack. So you just select your architecture, your cross compiler, uh, and the specific pro uh, protocols uh, we provide to have it compiled in your, in your library. Okay. So if you want to check out this code, it's uh, all publicly available on uh, GitHub. You can just watch it at tosbelgium slash github uh, slash picotsp uh, and ha ask any questions there if, uh, if, if you would have them. Um, the source is open and dual licensing uh, policy. So you have the GPL version two uh, and uh, a proprietary one if you would like for um, more uh, to have it for your company specifically if you don't want to be stuck to the GPL uh, parts. Okay, so how did we do our mesh implementation? Um, we had a, cha a challenge to port it towards uh, the University of Ghent network. Um, they have a set of nodes that are connected to each other. Um, uh, 50 um, amount of 50 nodes uh, and we needed to port it to, to, to that network and there was also already a tiny OS port available so we made a port to our, towards dot that uh, and thereby improve our OSR support and improve the feasibility of this uh, this product okay so the first step we did is actually port our stack to the the tiny OS application um, and use the the nasty wrapper uh, to support the PKTSP API. I will give a short demo in the end of that. Um, so what was this actually? So we have uh, on the top uh, an application which is actually using the lead PKTSP um, to interact with the networking stack uh, and the networking stack also requires a, a small driver to send it to the physical device actually um, and also next to that there's one uh, shared library available which uh, supports the the timer functionality of uh, both tiny us and PKTSP applications so to uh, to have all that running we just had the tiny, tiny OS with the, the application and the radio driver included, uh, and then have IPv4, UDP, and ICMP for uh, just to see send some ping messages and the OLSR, which makes uh, the mesh network uh, develop available. So all that together was constructed in uh, 27 kilobytes. So. The, the code for this is also available on PicoTSP, so you can check that out. Um, so to facilitate this, the debugging, we use the uh, Talos B boards. The, those, the network uh, in the university is all uh, built up by those boards. So we actually had one board which was connected to our PC for ETV debugging, uh, and there was the Talos B board, so the port for that is also available. Um, next to that, to separate it from the real world, we uh, we have written um, a, a mesh simulator where you can actually uh, implement your own application and see how that goes. Uh, so you can visualize where your nodes are situated and see which routes are being built. Okay, so this is actually the implementation of the mesh network on the, on the university. So we have about 50 nodes uh, over here, which are all connecting to each other and uh, having the same intelligence, just building up the route inside. And that looks kind of like this. So you, you just begin to get a lot of no uh, nodes that are 
uh, having routes towards all different nodes uh, and specifying their metrics available uh, on the right hand side. Okay, so I will give a short demo on uh, how this OLSR is behaving in, in the mesh network on the university. Um, and we'll give some description. Yeah, okay, I think it's two minutes. <laughs> so it should be fitting in there. Okay, so no, first of all, all nodes are, are booting up uh, and we'll try to send the hello messages as I have uh, said. So you will see all green arrows connecting to the nodes which are actually next to each other. Um, so I made the delay pretty uh, extensive uh, and you can actually set how fast you want the nodes to, to react on, on the specific uh, targets. So. Um, maybe we should be around here. Okay, so now you can see all nodes are connecting to their neighbors. And actually, there are, with the S17, uh, are the amount of nodes which are available in their routing table. So I made them become uh, a different color once they become having more routes. So more and more, all messages will send through the network and divide their routing information inside this network. So you can actually see that, for example, this the, the orange uh, arrows are actually two hops away. So you can uh, send a message via another uh, node to uh, a two hop away node. And at the red arrows are the two hops away. So you can actually see the longer the network is being configured, the more uh, nodes can be active on the system. Okay. And uh, so that's uh, kind of how all routes are being built up. And in the end, when all the routes are configured, it will be possible to plug out one node and uh, all network will uh, adapt towards this. Okay. So I think that's the most important part of, uh, of this. Um, so that was uh, a bit faster than pre pre predefined, but uh, to come to the conclusion, we have ported su successfully our application to TinyOS and provided the NoLSR implementation of mesh networking. So it, all this is running on IEEE 800.250.4. Um, network. So um, if you would like to, to have more information, I would advise to come to our stand and I would be willing to answer your questions. Okay. Okay, uh, some final words. Uh, thank you all for coming. Just downstairs. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Paul's been in special uh, dev room. And I hope we have another one next year. I think it was the 